Omniscience on the screen. Omniscience. Now, when I say omniscience, I mean having all knowledge, total knowledge. Look at Colossians 2, 1 through 4. For I want you to know how great a struggle I have on your behalf. And for those who are at Laodicea, and for all those who have not personally seen my face, that their hearts may be encouraged, having been knit together in love, and attaining to all the wealth that comes from the full assurance of understanding, resulting in a true knowledge of God's mystery, that is Christ himself. Here's the key right here in verse 3. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I'm going to say that again. Keep that on the screen. In whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are hidden in Christ. Think about this. Any knowledge and truth that you hear of, I don't care if you hear it from an atheist. I don't care if you hear it from some uh, famous person, some politician, wherever you may hear truth and you're just gripped by it. You know what that is? That's a reflection of Christ. Think about this. We can only reflect true knowledge and wisdom. The source of true knowledge and wisdom doesn't come from man. Think about this in terms of like the planets that circle our solar system. The light that we see from those planets, they do not generate the light from themselves. They reflect the light of the sun. So any truth, anyone can speak truth. Anyone can speak truth. We need to examine and test the spirits, all right? So there can be truth spoken by a non-Christian. That's okay. Why? because they are simply reflecting the light of the true knowledge and wisdom that comes from Christ. And this is even more important. If you want to increase your IQ, <laughs> you don't need to study worldly books. You need to study this Bible right here because true knowledge and wisdom, the treasures of wisdom and knowledge are here in this book because Christ is the word. Christ is the bread that we feed upon. If you want to increase your knowledge and wisdom of everything in the world, have the Bible as your main source of, of sustenance. I guarantee you, you will increase your IQ. I'm not suggesting you go out and take an IQ test before or after, but I'm, I, I, I honestly truly believe if that were done, you will see your IQ go up. You will see your intellectual capacity to absorb information, to assimilate information, to synthesize information, to make connections that you never could before. Your wisdom is going to go up. Why? Because you're feeding upon Christ. That's how important it is to understand these particular verses and the importance of Bible study. We need to put aside and the distractions that get in our way of, of whatever things that can take us away from the Bible. Because the enemy is smart and he wants to do everything he can to keep you away from this word. All right, we need to do everything in our power to keep this word at the forefront, that we consume, that we read it, that we, that we are talking about it, that we are encouraging one another. Me and my wife constantly talk each other to each other about the word. And thank you, Jamie. I know she's behind the scenes right here. She's the one that makes all this stuff happen right here. But we talk with each other constantly about uh, Christ in us, working in us, working in other people's lives. And we examine, we, we love to examine the Bible together and we learn so much from it and we interact. So I just pray that you would continue to make that your priority. Let's keep going on with this study. Omniscience. Let's go to the next verse right here on the screen, uh, Luke 9, 46 to 48. Now, I will say this before we go through these scriptures. The next few scriptures that we're going to go, Jesus knows their thoughts. All right, I don't want to spend a lot of time in this. I just want to demonstrate to you, Jesus knows their thoughts. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He has total knowledge, and he knows what people are trying to do or what they're going to do. So let's just quickly go through these verses. Luke 9, 46 to 48. 
An argument started among them as to which of them might be the greatest. Obviously talking about the disciples here. But Jesus, knowing what they were thinking in their hearts, took a child and stood, stood him by his side and said, that, whoever receives this child in my name receives me. I won't read the rest of that, but here's a scripture where Jesus knows men's thoughts, right? He is omniscient. Next one, Luke 6, 7 to 8. Now, the Pharisees and the scribes watching him closely to see if he will heal on the Sabbath so that he might, they, they might find a reason to accuse him, but he knew what they were thinking. See, he's omniscient. He knows what they're thinking, and he said to them, to the man to the withered head, get up and come forward, and he came forward, and he stretches out his hand, and he heals him. Next verse, Matthew 12, 24 to 25. They're wondering where does Jesus get this power, and he knows their thoughts, and he says, any kingdom divided against itself is laid waste, and any city or house divided against itself will not stand. One more scripture verse, you know it, Mark 12, 15. They're basically saying, who should we pay taxes to? Should we pay to Caesar or not? And he knows their hypocrisy right there in verse 15. He knows their hypocrisy, and he said to them, why are you testing me? And he says, bring me a denarius. And you know the story. He says, pay to Caesar what is Caesar, and to God what is God's. And they were amazed because he already knew they, what they were trying to do. Last thing, I'll say Mark 2, 5 through 10. I won't read it all, but skip just to verse 8. Immediately, Jesus was aware in his spirit what they were reasoning that way within themselves said to them, why are you reasoning about these things in your heart? You know, they, they were wondering, you know, how can he speak this way and say your sins are forgiven? That's blasphemy. But no, Jesus has the power. So I just wanted to point these scriptures out. He's omniscient. Last couple here, John 4, 16 through 18. He's with the woman at the well. Jesus said to her, you have correctly said, I have no husband, for you have had five husbands, and the one you on whom you now have is not your husband this you have said truly and then the woman realizes that he's omniscient (laughs) sir i perceive that you are a prophet (laughs) yes he knows exactly what's going on in her life john 1 48 to 49 this is uh nathaniel nathaniel said to him how do you know me and jesus answered and said before philip called you when you were under the fig tree i saw you nathaniel answered rabbi you are the son of god you are the king of israel Again, Jesus demonstrating his omniscience. He knows everything. He has total knowledge. He even knew who was going to betray him. John 13, 11, for he knew the one who was betraying him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. He's talking about Judas. Even though he knew Judas was going to betray him, he still was reaching out to Judas, trying to get him to change his mind about betraying him. Judas had free will and free choice, um, but Jesus knew he was going to follow through with that. Now, some people say, well, if Jesus is omniscient, then why does he say not even the son knows what hour he's going to return at? That's a great question. Let's examine that scripture. Look at Mark 13, 32 to 33. But of that day or hour, no one knows, nor even the angels in heaven, nor the son, but the father alone. Take heed, keep on alert, for you do not know when the appointed time will come. We see Jesus talking about his second coming, and he says, not even the Son knows. Now, it's important to understand, he places limitations on himself when he clothes himself with humanity. That's the reality of it. Now, this is one piece of information that he withholds from himself and the Father withholds because of the limitations he places. But notice just the declarative nature of this statement back on the screen. Look at what he says. He says, but of that day or hour no one knows, nor even the angel of heaven, nor the son, but the father alone. Now, that declarative statement reveals his omniscience because he's saying that no one knows except the father. So let's not overthink this particular verse in terms of Jesus' omniscience. Like what you see? Subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Or you can go to angelsintheglen.org. That's angelsintheglen.org. We've got an entire series for you to take you through the events that must take place before Christ returns. God wants his people ready. It's not a time to fear. It's a time to be ready. I hope you'll join us.